Good morning and welcome back to Trader's Edge. So traders this week will have to weigh up data on how the US economy fared in the third quarter along with key readings of consumer inflation data and spending amongst with other stuff that might move market and cause more choppiness. Uh, joining me now to help break all this down is professional trader all the way from Canada and the founder of Caruso Insights, Matt Caruso. Matt, good to have you on. Thanks, thanks so much for having me, uh, Ricardo. All right, so Matt, despite the fair stability that we saw in the market this week, uh, we are likely to see increased volatility. We already saw some movements after the US GDP data today. We have in our calendar uh, uh, PCE data, ISM PMI, and a public speech by the Fed Chair Powell on Friday. Uh, we want to start with the core PCE. So traders are obviously keeping a very close eye to that announcement. They, they expect that whether that will confirm inflation, the world's largest economy is slowing. That's important for whether the Fed will maintain rates or even cut rates starting the new year. What's your overall take? And uh, do you agree with the general consensus that they can actually be done with rate hikes and they could start cutting by next year? Absolutely. I think that's exactly where we're headed. If you take a look at the more uh, real-time readings of the core PCEs, which housing is a very large component. If you look at the real-time readings, there's a much more significant slowdown that's already being you know, uh, baked into the PCE reading. So I, I see that continuing to slow in the coming months. I think if anything, we'll have downside surprises. So I think that's going to provide a firm bid under equities uh, and, and really continue the dramatic rotations we've seen since the last FOMC meeting. Fantastic. And obviously, we've seen from today's US GDP data that we have seen rallies in the indices. More specifically, I want to start with the NASDAQ. Uh, that's been slightly underpinned by the fact that treasuries have started to fall, the dollars continuing to weakening. There has been some positive consensus from the market that, like you said, we are going to be into a positive set where the Fed continues to either maintain or even cut rates in the new year. Um, but I want to start with that. So it seems to be crossed or have crossed the critical level of 16,100. At the moment, is there what do you see technically? Is there a potential for it to move up to new highs potentially in the next week or so? You know, a lot of important critical movements happening. PCE tomorrow, obviously, being one of them in the short term, but also with the Fed announcement and the uh, uh, well, sorry, uh, CPI data again going on and the unemployment data. Uh, what, what do you see? Yeah, so I, what I see actually is internally, there's been a lot of bullish rotations going on in the market. So unlike a lot of uh, earlier times this year, uh, although a lot of stocks beginning 2023 kind of came off of their bear market lows, once that took place, it was a lot of the kind of sustained, very mega cap stocks that led the rally. For the first time since the FOMC bottom, you're seeing a really dramatic change internally what's going on with the market. So although the NASDAQ has kind of uh, been little changed for the past week or so, internally, you're seeing bonds continue to be bid overall. You're seeing uh, a lot of money flow into longer duration assets, into high growth, into things like biotech, golds looking to break over 2,000 more sustainably. So I think if we continue to see data trends continue, especially with PCE tomorrow, I think this is only going to add even more fuel to this rally. That This is really a new rally taking place under the surface. It may seem like it's a continuation of what we saw with the NASDAQ earlier in the year, but the, the components driving this rally are vastly different. Uh, you can see how throughout all of uh, June, July, August, right into uh, the, the main bottoms for bonds, I mean, they were sold heavily despite the NASDAQ being higher. So seeing bonds lead off of their bear market lows, that's completely changed the dynamics of what's been leading within the market. So I see continued strength, but I think there's gonna be a rotation on in, in who leads this market. And so you're gonna wanna be focusing on long duration assets, that whether that, that's bonds, uh, things like gold, and even within the market, you want to focus on stocks that are long duration, higher growth, and uh, stocks of that nature. Absolutely. You mentioned gold. It's very interesting, right? They, it has crossed the 2000 mark. It's not uh, even overcome critical resistance levels. Uh, but what case or when do you build the case for a sustained rally for gold? And what are you looking for in terms of the short term? If you're looking at a, at a day trader, what, what, what does he look for? So I think the key, absolute key thing that drives gold are real real interest rates. And so I know this is something Sarah Powell has been speaking about quite a bit, saying that he thinks that you know a real rates are at 2%. So we have interest rates uh, above the inflation rate. Um, even if we don't, uh, if the Fed doesn't hike any further, even if we stay where we are, so even in a more kind of hawkish stance, even if you don't factor in a rate cuts on the, on the, the, near, the short end, by seeing kind of the long end of bonds starting to ease, that's going to lower the real rates. And that's really going to... Uh, put a bid under gold. So I think we're, we're at the beginning of a breakout. I think we've reached the top of the cycle for real rates, which is the main driver for gold. 
So seeing that starting to reverse, I think you're at the very beginning of what could be a gold move that's finally sustainable above 2000. I mean, we first hit 2000 back in 2011. So this has been a really important line in the sand. Now, if you can drill down even into equities, um, gold equities and even silver stocks have been very stubborn. Uh, they've been kind of suffering the brunt of inflation in terms of uh, operation costs. So seeing now uh, that gold starting at over 2000, seeing that some of those stocks are now coming into, into play are starting to kind of build strength and show strength. That's typical of the beginning of a more sustainable rally. Typically, you'll see gold miners confirm strength in gold. And for the first time in a long time, we're starting to see that again. So for myself, even in the short term, uh, I'm, I'm long gold equities. And I'd be looking to add on any weakness down to even short term key averages. Uh, for example, an eight exponential average or a 10 day average is where I'm going to be looking to add to my uh, gold equity holdings. Got it. And it's quickly about treasuries. You've spoken a lot about that one. I don't think it's going to go back to 5%. We expect to see more weakness, uh, weaker dollar. Uh, what, what are you looking for specifically right now with treasuries? Two-year, 10-year? I, I think we put in the, the peak of the cycle. So I think we're going to be seeing, if, if you're talking uh, treasury yields, you're going to see a trend of lower highs, lower lows. If you're looking at bond, uh, you know, treasury prices, we're going to see a series of higher highs and higher lows. I, I think it's, it's interesting. If you take a look at a longer-term chart of the TLT, which is kind of a mix of uh, longer term treasury bonds. I think there's clear signs that we had a climax bottom that was put in in uh, late 2023, similar to how we had a climax top in bonds uh, during the COVID pandemic. So you can you can almost really, if you look at the, vi the volume cues, you can really like visually see the two goalposts of where we had our top and where we I think we put our bottom in. So, you know, any any uptrend, the, the, the old maxims always remain true. If the trend's up, you buy the dips. If the, the trend's down, you sell the rally. So this is a buy the dips type of market if we really put that bottom in. Got it. And you talked a lot about stocks. We had a lot of conversations around the Magnificent Seven. Uh, they were the ones that held up the rally for a very long time. The AI rally as well that we saw in NVIDIA and other stocks. Uh, you see now small cap stocks, like you said at the beginning, joining into that conversation, into that narrative. Uh, what are you looking at? What stocks seem to be interesting in your portfolio these days? So this is what where I, I get most excited when, when, when especially going past the MAG7. It's always nice to make a profit, but it's, it's nice when you see uh, more of a plethora of, of stocks to choose from. So there's I think there's many ways you can attack this. Um, if you're looking, there's some recent IPOs, which are more dynamic. They tend to be smaller cap. There's kind of a, a breadth of an offering there. There's also mid cap growth, which has, I think, been um, held down by worries about a weak economy, which are coming back to life. So if you want to look more at the uh, sh the small cap uh, arena, you can look at stocks like Shark Ninja SN, which is a recent spinoff, which has been uh, basing sideways and starting to break higher. It's retesting its base breakout. So that's showing a lot of strength. There are also some other small caps, such as um, uh, Freshworks, FRSH, which is putting a very nice basing pattern. And you're seeing a lot of this strength come up the right side of these bases as um, the, the softening of, bond, of uh, bond yields are starting to work throughout the system, giving a bid to these recent IPOs. I think if you look even past small caps and you look at kind of more like mid cap uh, or small large cap growth, th there's a, a, an incredible amount of strength taking place in that, in that group. Um, you can look at cybersecurity stocks, stocks like CrowdStrike, which had great earnings and gapped up. Also, there's uh, Palo Alto Networks, which reported last week, which was an initial downside reaction which has now come back very strongly, breaking to all-time highs. I mean, there's very few stocks sitting at all-time highs, and Palo Alto uh, is one of those stocks. Um, there's uh, some other great stocks. I think great stories like Shopify. There was some great Black Friday spend. Uh, we had records for Black Friday spend. Uh, Shopify is, is a great, I think, example of a possible turnaround play. And they'll be benefiting from, obviously, lowering uh, falling uh, interest rates, but also... They spun off a lot of the capital intensive um, businesses they were trying to focus on. They're trying to compete head to head with Amazon in terms of distribution, in terms of um, uh, the delivery network. They've spun that off. They've made friends with Amazon. And I think if they focus on their core business of e-commerce, uh, you're seeing records there. So I, I think that's an underappreciated growth story because of some turmoil it had last year. I think they're, they're back strongly on the growth path. Got it. I don't know if you heard that as well, Matt, or you even see this in your charts, but people are saying GameStop very much ripe for a potential breakout, expecting a 30% increase from now to a year end. Is this something that you see? Uh, well, so GameStop, I, I, I try and avoid the stocks that are kind of just uh, purely momentum based. I, I, I think GameStop is something that can squeeze, uh, which is the whole reason why it squeezed the first time. But this is something that there, there are, I think there are so many people holding it from the last cycle who will remain under pressure. Uh, 
this is something you want to sell into. I mean, not that it can't go higher, not that it can't squeeze even to a 200 day average, which would be a, a fair, a fair return, but it, it's a very uh, high risk, high volatility type of play. I, I think there's far more sustainable, uh, better opportunities than, than GameStop out there. Got it. Uh, speaking of high volatility, again, we expect a lot of choppiness over the next couple of weeks, but more specifically tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, given the big major economic events. Uh, you as a trader, other traders listening to you, how are you approaching this? What's your strategy? Well, I really see this market. I, we're in a, in a um, I think, a unique situation. If you look at the data, the breadth data of how powerful this move has started since they put in its bottom, we have the potential of being at the beginning of a, of a true bull market up leg. Now, that, that, you know, there's always kind of different permutations of how they can come out. And, and, and one is you want to be buying those dips. Sometimes the dips don't come. You have what they call a lockout rally where you just stay persistently strong. There's just been too much money on the sidelines. There's been too much uh, bearish um, sentiment for too long. So I'm really positioned to kind of um, approach this market from both ways. I'm, I'm continuing to increase exposure slowly on the long side as, as stocks advance with low risk entries. But I'm, I also have some cash in reserve in case we do get that kind of dip lower. So in terms of stocks, I'm looking for kind of some softness, uh, stocks like Shopify, which have been, like I said, fairly vertical coming off of earnings with this good market, any kind of an easing down to even a 21 exponential moving average, I think would be a great opportunity if there's any kind of softness after what's been a fairly straight move up. Uh, but equally, there are some, I think, very powerful stocks like uh, Arm Holdings, which it was a recent IPO, which just came out and it's it's basing. You can see this has gone pretty vertical since it broke out of its base. It's starting to consolidate sideways somewhat. Uh, I think any kind of break higher, if, if let's say PC comes in lower than expected and this market gets a continued bid, these small sideways consolidations provide really good short-term entries in what I think is an, uh, a beginning and accelerating trend. Matt, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for joining us today. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we close off? No, I, I think just uh, focusing on on the internal rotations, that there's really something unique that's taking place. It's it's uh, far more dynamic than any of the rallies we had earlier in the year. So it's, it's not only positioning long. You can see, for example, uh, QQQ has been fairly flat for the past week or so, but there's been a lot of strength internally. So focusing on both market trend, but also the very strong internal rotations, getting yourself positioned in the right stocks uh, is going to be critical to maximize any kind of returns in this trend. Fantastic. Matt, thank you for joining us. It's always a pleasure, my man. Thank you. Thank you.